Get your decade ahead horoscope now at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of July 28, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. And it is essentially, like it just comes down to Leo. Leo season in full effect. We are fully into it as we start the week right out of the gate. And that energy is only gonna intensify the further and further we move into the week. Now, if you think about Leo energy, right, it can be very confident, right? In its highest expression, it can be an energy of knowing your self-worth and knowing that there is something within you that is worthy of shining and being seen. But of course, sometimes it's attention for its own sake. And with a week like this, any expression that is not aligned with something truly authentic within us likely isn't gonna go so well. And that is because we have got a lot of Uranian energy as well. The planet Uranus is one of surprise and given the nature of the conversations, these are conversations of tension, what astrologers call a square. Well, these aren't just going to be surprises, but in some cases there might be uh, some shocks as well. There might be moments that feel uncomfortable on the surface, but ultimately are about helping us to align with that sense of greater authenticity within us. But if I had to really summarize it in one word, I would say honest. This is a week that is all about helping us to get honest with ourselves. Now, whether that's honest about where it is that you could be more confident or where it is that you could own your own light more fully, or whether that's honest in a different area of life, wherever it is that we are being asked to own our power, but to root it in being truly honest with ourselves. And as much as it is that we have gotten off that path of being able to see clearly is as much as it will be stark to be brought back into alignment with that sense of seeing clearly. So for some, this may be external events that feel uncomfortable that then lead us to understanding our truth more deeply. For others, this could be not necessarily an external thing, but an epiphany that may not feel completely comfortable, but is needed. And for others still, this can be a time when there are opportunities, there are developments that we don't really know how to feel about right away, but actually our feelings may start to change for them dramatically as we move towards the very end of the week. Now, before I dive in further, I want to give you a little bit of a heads up because next week we have got such beautiful energy. I mean, it is all Jupiter, okay? So we've got this beautiful, expansive energy. We've got a little bit of Saturnian energy as well. So there's this sense of groundedness. So what it is this week that can feel uh, so uh, much like it takes us off a sense of balance whatever it is now that could feel so shocking, that could feel so uncertain or just put us into uncertainty can just as quickly put us on a pathway of hope and inspiration and knowing that what has transpired really was for the very best, really was for the highest opportunity for the universe to allow even bigger blessings to come into our life. And that's why I say with a week like this, It is very important not to hold on too tightly. It is very important to not insist that life be or outcomes be or other people be what it is that you want them to be. There are times when it is uh, one of the sacred things about being a human being is that we have free will. We can own our free will. We can take it and run with it and we can truly move our lives in the direction that we want to go. I mean, I think about, uh, for example, the middle-class work ethic, right? This is an ethic that I grew up in, uh, in my home. This idea that you can work on your own behalf to improve your circumstances. It is such a privilege. It is such a blessing and it is so inherent to who we are as human. But there are times when the most powerful thing we can do to move our lives forward, the most powerful way we can exercise our will is by practicing surrender and by practicing acceptance. And so how do you know the difference is wisdom? That's really what it comes down to. And sometimes 
being willing to give yourself the time to make sense of what it is that is transpiring in your life. And so we have a lot of energy here that can bring very quick insights uh, in sometimes very surprising ways. We have bursts of clarity happening and epiphany. That is the other big word of this week, but it comes about in ways that isn't necessarily direct, that might be a little bit round and about. And so I'll give you a little bit of an example. I remember really, really trying very hard after I finished school, trying very hard to get a job, trying to very hard to get a teaching job. Um, that is what I thought I wanted to do. And I remember uh, sending out these resumes over a course of nine months, sending out resumes. I finally got one interview, if you could believe it. Um, and it was an interview that was so incredibly uncomfortable. I was so hopeful, I was so excited, but I just knew that uh, this would not be a healthy work situation. I could just feel it from the, the interviewer, uh, from the people, from the bosses. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a toxic work environment. I do not wanna be here. Now that was a difficult assessment to make for the reason that I had spent just so many months uh, not only applying for stuff, but working on uh, a book, working on uh, developing and, and solidifying my place as a full-time astrologer. And this wasn't even an astrology related job but I needed to live, right? Um, but what ended up happening was I kept going with what I was doing in my own time. Three months later, I got a job offer from another school, another college, a private college to teach. And the same day I got offered, I was contacted by who became my agent for three years to write horoscopes in uh, Canadian newspapers, uh, daily horoscopes that I did for three years moving forward. Now, I share that with you only because I actually have so many examples I could give about my life, about other people's lives as well, where we have a moment where it's difficult to accept the truth, where there's so much expectation, where there's that sense that we really want things to be a certain way, but then we have to also look at what life is showing us. We have to look at the truth. And in so doing, we don't always realize in the moment but that can actually open us up to even greater blessings if we are willing to listen to ourselves. And I think that is also part of the blessing of Leo energy. Leo is the sign that rules the heart in medical astrology. And the heart is of course a physical understanding of the heart as in with medically oriented understandings of the sky. But of course we have that metaphorical heart as well. We have that understanding of heart that is more rooted in understanding our core, understanding love and trusting an energy of love within us. And this isn't necessarily romantic love, although we'll talk about that in a moment. It doesn't necessarily mean romantic love, it might, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. But there are ways in which love infuses everything and every part of our lives. There are decisions that we make, sometimes small decisions, as we move through our day. We make choices as to whether or not we're going to allow love to come into this moment, whether or not we are going to bring eyes of love to see what is transpiring. And sometimes I know that that can be really, really hard, especially when there's attachment involved. When there's attachment involved and all our emotions get into it, it can be that much harder to take that little bit of step back and choose to see things with eyes of love. But that may very well be part of what this week asks for us. So, okay, let's talk about what's happening astrologically speaking. As we start this week, right out of the gate, the sun is speaking in a conversation of tension with Uranus. But what also happens as we start this week is that Venus is gonna move into the sign of Leo. The sun is already there. And so this brings with it a very fabulous and confident energy, right? But it is that Uranus that can throw things off a little bit, that can either have us questioning our confidence or have us looking at ourselves more deeply, redefining confidence as a result of what was transpiring in our lives or what feelings or realizations are coming up for us. But then as we navigate further into the week, Thursday, very big day. Now you wanna give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. This is August 1st, uh, when we are going to have a new moon. 
And this new moon, also in the sign of Leo, this new moon also speaking in a conversation of tension, the same type of conversation of tension with Uranus. This new moon is happening close in the sky with Venus. And by the time we move further into the week, Venus will also speak with Uranus as well. So there's a common denominator here, right? And it is the planet of shock and surprise and epiphany and uh, sudden realizations, but also sudden change or really big change that can happen. Now, again, I just want to affirm, I'm not saying that this energy for this week necessarily is going to feel so easy. I'm sorry to say that, but in at least one area of life, it is possible that for some people it might feel a little challenging. If it is that truths are coming forward or the realizations that are having are really bringing you out of an illusion uh, and perhaps a very powerful illusion that you held, it's going to be that much harder as you navigate this week. However, for a lot of people out there, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think a much more likely scenario is going to be finally realizing what it is that your heart is asking. Finally realizing the power of your heart to love, to bring compassion. What are the, the qualities that we associate with heart? Well, it all has to do with compassion, empathy, forgiveness, right? These are qualities that we strongly associate with this part of our physical body, the part of our body that is our heart. And so, yes, in a moment where we're not really sure what to do, we may have that glimpse to understand that this moment is asking us to choose love, even though the surface circumstances don't feel so comfortable. So again, I'm going to go back to my example with that particular school that I went to interview with. There was this experience that I really, really wanted. But in that moment, I, of course, I was very polite. I was always, it, that matters to me a lot to be kind to other people to the best of my ability. But I had to choose love for myself. And that wasn't actually so hard. Now that I think about it, now that I realize, I mean, I remember I left that interview, I just felt like I, I could feel it, that this was so toxic an environment. And I knew. And so that space between the attachment and knowing where freedom is being asked for, it might not be that long. But admitting it to ourselves, sometimes that can take a few minutes, sometimes that can take a few hours, uh, sometimes it takes longer. But with a week like this, see, here's the thing again, the week like this, yeah, it's challenging, but next week is so inspiring. It is so beautiful. So let me uh, ask you this, and I'm not saying that this is a likely situation in your life, but how many times have we had the experience that, um, we've been let go of a job, right? And we are very, very upset about this but then we end up in an even better job, better than we could have imagined, so much better an environment, right? Or better circumstances come about as a result of what it was that we came to realize or as a result of where it is that we had to change. Change isn't always easy. I think that depending, of course, on your sign, uh, it's very interesting, the fixed signs I think about, right? The fixed signs are Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Taurus. Um, they happen in the middle of the season. And so it's said that these signs are stubborn, right? And they resist change. But at the same time, these signs thrive on change. Like they intimately understand that there is an ebb and flow to life and that things do evolve. Now, regardless of your sign, what your sun sign or moon sign or rising sign might be, this energy is going to speak to all of us, as I said, in at least one area of life. I want to add another thing here, though. I've been focusing a lot on the Leo energy. Yes, there's strong Leo energy this week, and it's that sense of uh, what's happening on a level of our hearts that is about to open up. We will be invited to explore something different about ourselves, to learn more about ourselves and to realize more about the power that love can bring to any moment, but especially when we bring it to ourselves. But there's something else happening. It's not all about Leo energy this week. Under the light of the new moon, Mercury is going to go direct. 
Now, when it is that a planet changes directions at the same time that we have important lunar activity, like a new moon or a full moon or an eclipse, it always represents some major shift for the collective, certainly, right? Some realizations for the collective, but certainly personally as well and in our own individual journeys. And so right now, Mercury retrograde as we start this week, it spent the retrograde uh, season so far moving back and forth between two signs, the sign of Cancer and the sign of Leo. Right now though, it is Mercury back in the sign of Cancer. And it is going to be under the light of this new moon. Uh, it, is, it is remarkable how aligned these moments are. But under the light of this new moon, or under the dark of the new moon rather, is a better way to put it, is when we are going to have Mercury stand still and go forward in the sign of Cancer. Now the sign of Cancer has to do with a few different things. It has to do with our understanding of our past. It has to do with how we perceive our past. It has to do with a, a sense of bringing a different lens to events that occurred before. And so when it is that we choose to redefine our past, redefine or understand differently or bring forgiveness to what happened long ago, that can be a very powerful way to live more in the present, to live more empowered today. And this is a sign that is connected to family as well, whether it's on a level of family identity and ancestry or our parents. This is a sign that is connected to where we actually live, like our living space, what we understand as home. It might relate for you to a country or a city or a neighborhood. But in some way now, with this new moon, some awakening, some new understanding of heart, of desire, of passion, some awakening now is intimately connected to seeing the past differently, seeing where we come from differently. And again, where we come from can be uh, like literally, or it can be a particular area of life. But where it is that we have been and how it is that it brings us to this moment of making a choice, of deciding where it is that we are going to begin again, that is what every new moon promises us. It asks us to begin again in at least one area of life. Where it is that our heart, that Leo energy, is asking us to begin again, it is going to be fueled by an understanding or a clarity a different view, a different understanding of our own home, of our own past, and of truly the ground on which we stand. Now the Cancerian energy is also connected to being at home within yourself, like feeling safe and secure and feeling at home within your skin, within your own body. And that is powerful. When you have that, you can feel that much more at home within any place that you find yourself in. As you go out into the world and the environments you find yourself in, if you are at home within yourself, you are so much more at ease as you move through the world. And I believe that with the Mercury going direct, okay? So Mercury going direct is very powerful in and of itself. In and of itself, it's like in an instant, what was confusing or what we weren't sure of, or maybe we didn't even realize that we had the wrong information. It's like in an instant, we realize. In an instant, we see things differently, we see clearly. And then you add this Uranian energy that is all about not only seeing clearly, but seeing ahead, seeing into the future. So we have this energy of the past, which is also connected to cancer, right? We have the, the sense of loyalty and, and sometimes nostalgia of the Leo energy. And all of this happening simultaneously with an energy of Uranus, an energy of the future, an energy that asks us to leap forward and to understand that the bigger blessings, the bigger truth, the real authenticity comes when we move out of our comfort zone. Cancerian energy is all about the comfort zone. A fixed sign like Leo wants that sense of stability that comes from things being kind of comfortable sometimes. 
It's a sign that also speaks to leisurely activities, right? Normally when we're participating in leisurely activities, we're kind of laid back, right? It's not like we're striving or going for something. We are comfortable. Uranus is not a comfortable energy. <laughs> Uranus is an energy that says whatever the future may bring, know that if it is honest, it is good. If it is authentic, it is great. We are going to be asked to remember where it is that we come from, what it is that we know will allow us to feel at peace within ourselves, within our bodies, within our souls. We're going to be asked to see the past differently in a way that ultimately allows us to truly be true to our hearts right now, but also to trust, to surrender, knowing that the future is great. What I love about this week for us, well, there is so much here. That new moon, pretty powerful, right? New moons, they tend to be very much on the surface. I think lunar events, uh, they are what we feel most. The moon is a symbol for what we feel. And the moon is also the ruling luminary of the sign of Cancer. And that magnifies that Mercury direct in the sign of Cancer that much more the fact that we have this powerful new moon. But remember, Venus, Venus is here as well. And Venus may very well be a saving grace. Now, yes, we've got all that Uranian energy. I think that's about the 10th time I've used that Uranian energy phrase, <laughs> but we've got all this Uranian energy, yes. And this is not the time for any kind of romantic surprise, romantic declaration. I would say this would be the kind of week where you just wanna go with the flow. You just wanna chill right? Do your best and surrender the rest <laughs> is a great way to approach this week. Knowing that the brilliance, the understanding, the insight, and the shift that you need will come. It will find you. With Uranus, it always does. Well, with a week like this, it is ultimately asking us and reminding us that beginnings can happen. And sometimes on the surface, they may not feel comfortable, but something within us knows if it is good. Something within us knows what it is that is going to allow us to know our hearts more deeply. And that's gonna allow us a sense of ease as we move through the world. And wherever it is that there is a situation that is not allowing you that sense and that level of authenticity, well, with energy like this, it'll probably leave. It might leave. And that really is okay because just around the corner, like next week around the corner, my goodness, the energy is just so magical, so optimistic, so enthusiastic that there's every reason to truly be excited about what's ahead. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. It really is so encouraging and so really wild for some people out there, but that really will be part of the fun. And whatever it is that transpires now, let me say that it is part of a divine and loving plan that is going to get us to that place of massive blessings that are literally around the corner next week. If you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I want to send a burst of gratitude to all my superstars. I appreciate you. I love you so much. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun on the Facebook group. So if you are a superstar and you have yet joined uh, please do find us there uh, every month for superstars I do like a live stream at the new moon and so we are gonna have a lot of fun this coming week uh, as we do our meditation and live hangout together under this very active very surprising Leo new moon 
Now, I also want to thank my students at Synchronicity University. I'm taping this video a little bit early. The last couple of weeks I've recorded uh, the YouTube video after, like sometimes immediately after the class. Uh, but this time, uh, I'm doing it a little bit beforehand, but that's okay. I know that I am uh, going to have an incredible group because so far it's just been so wonderful, so rewarding. We are in the middle of summer school. You can still sign up, you can still join us. Join us for a single class, join us uh, for the whole thing. You'll get instant video downloads for the classes that have already taken place and links to join us live. Everybody gets downloads, even the Synchronicity Summer School. Uh, has its own Facebook group where we simulcast the classes now as well, uh, in addition to them taking place on the Zoom platform. So that tends to be really nice for students to be able to uh, see the replay right away before those links are uh, sent out a few days after the class. So that's been really great interacting with you guys on Facebook too, but of course that live interaction, I just love, <laughs> like I love it so much. Uh, and uh, summer school has meant so much to me. So it is, as you're watching this today, Saturday, uh, that we, by the time this airs, had the class uh, on the midheaven in the astrology chart. And so I literally have the PowerPoint ready uh, and going through each sign, going through some houses as well, and I explain why and, and what's up with that. Uh, going through all of that, looking at your midheaven and what it is that it says for you. The midheaven, of course, is a point in the sky that speaks to career and success and social standing and life purpose and so much more. Uh, so we will be diving very deep into that as I'm recording this, but you can see my deep dive into that uh, if you're already enrolled or if you use the links in the description below and join us uh, and join us on the replay. Now next week is going to be uh, the last actual class. I mean, I'm going to have a Q&A session that happens like the week after that, so two weeks from now. But it is next week that I will be doing the very uh, requested and what a lot of people have been uh, signing up for and enthusiastic about, and that is the Introduction to Astrological Magic class. Uh, so what we're gonna do with that class is we are going to go through uh, the history and some of the big dogs of uh, modern Western esoteric practice and what they believed about astrological magic. And then I'll give you a few basics, like the kind of thing that if you're a superstar and you watch the replay or you join me live, um, you know that sometimes I talk about things like correspondences and things like that and in the meditations that we do together. Well, it is going to be some of that information that I share. And so I want to be very clear we're not initiating anybody here, right? There are established traditions. Uh, that I respect greatly. And uh, this is about appreciating where it is that we come from when we approach the sky with a magical lens. And what I hope also is that it helps us to uh, awaken to how it is that astrology is really integrated in everything. So one specific example that we're gonna be talking about is Plato. Uh, this is where my nerd hat comes out because uh, it is Plato's uh, work, Timaeus, that we'll be uh, looking at, touching on a little bit. As I said, we'll be sharing different thinkers throughout history to understand astrological uh, magic more deeply. But it was Timaeus uh, that talks about uh, what Plato called chains of correspondence. So this idea that there's a source um, that has a certain mystery around it, and then there are these higher gods uh, who are represented by the physical planets, like coming, springing forward from this source, from this core, uh, we come forward to the gods. And from the gods, we move forward, like connected by a chain to the physical planet. And then from there, we come forward and in this way, he connects like every herb, every uh, part of our body, every, um, every element, right? Whatever you can think of in our physical world, it is connected to some planet. It is connected to something in the sky, some representation in the sky. Um, and so we are going to be building on ideas like this. We'll be talking about uh, Iamblichus and Plotinus and uh, others that I think is going to be really fascinating. So it's going to be so, so much fun. I'm really looking forward 
to all my Synchronicity University students um, because I know that this class has been met with a lot of enthusiasm. So we'll enjoy that together. And of course, if you haven't signed up yet, you'd be very welcome to do that, to join us live or uh, to download the replay and learn from infinitely. And then the week after, as I said, will be a Q&A for any follow-up questions and we'll get to hang out together. That'll be really, really fun as well. Live events I have coming up. I am in talks for all kinds of events in 2020. We are gonna really have lots of opportunities to connect in person uh, at different places around the world, and I'm really looking forward to that. But let me say, this year we have uh, coming up Labor Day weekend, I will be in Baltimore as part of the NCGR conference. Uh, some of the most brilliant minds in astrology today will be teaching at this conference. Uh, it's an amazing value for astrology students, but of course to connect with fellow astrologers as well. You can't beat a conference. I'm a big believer in conferences uh, to help people to actually understand the power uh, more fully the power of being an astrologer it it really is a very special bond that you share with others but the encouragement that you get uh, the people that you connect with the way that they change you long after the conference is over um, is absolutely worth experiencing so links are in the description below and in january of 2020 uh, I will be part of a cruise event. My very first time even being on a cruise ever, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but it really is set to be an experience. We've got uh, some highly acclaimed astrologers who are going to be there as well. I am one of the speakers and we will be out of our comfort zones. We will be in the middle of the ocean. We will be also docking and stopping at ports in Mexico, Honduras, and Belize. So we'll be sharing this experience together, uh, creating this community and being out of our comfort zones. And the intention really is to serve as an experience that transforms us in some way, an experience that leaves us changed and makes us better, especially once we're back on land, uh, leaves us with tools that we can use to then go out uh, and be forces of transformation and love, joy, and hope in the lives of others. So you are very welcome to learn more about that. Thank you so much to all the wonderful students who have already signed up. Well, students, no, participants with this because I am also a participant. Yes, I'll be leading uh, a session or two, but it is me that is experiencing this along with you. So I'm really looking forward to that. And links are in the description below. And I'll wait until Mercury is direct before I announce all the new and wonderful events that are already in the works for me. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you, for this, uh, just the privilege, the privilege of being some small part of your sacred journey. Uh, the privilege of being part of affirming love and wisdom in the world. It truly does mean so much to me. And, and thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you again. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.